identification and the initialization of a fraction object all in one line. Why don't we take the last uh, fraction program that we created and modify it to illustrate how we can work with multiple objects in a program. So we're going to go back to that program and let's start by changing this first line. This time we're going to allocate a fraction called FRAC1 and we're going to allocate it and initialize it at the same time using the technique that was just described. We'll Get rid of these three lines here from our program. Now what we're going to do is we're going to allocate a second fraction object in our program and we do that the same way we allocated the first fraction object. We ask the fraction class to give us a new fraction. We initialize it and this time we s assign the result back to frac2. So let's come down here and we'll change our comments. Let's set the first fraction to two-thirds. So in this case we'll send the set numerator message to frac1 tell it to set the numerator to 2. We'll tell it to set its denominator to 3 just like before. And now we'll go ahead and we're going to oops this is, should be frac1 up here. Now we're going to set the numerator of the second fraction to 3, just some arbitrary value. We're going to set this second fraction to 3 sevenths. So we set its numerator to 3. We set its denominator to 7. And now what we have in our program are two fraction objects, frac1, which we allocated and initialized up here, frac2, which we allocated and initialized here. We go ahead and we set the first fraction to 2, its numerator to 2. We set its denominator to 3, effectively creating a fraction whose value is 2 thirds. Let's put a comment in here. And we go ahead and we set the second fraction to 3 sevenths by invoking the set numerator and set denominator methods with the values 3 and 7 respectively. And we'll come down here and we'll display the fractions one at a time. We'll write that the value of the first fraction is and we'll follow it by a call of the print method to frac1. We'll then write another nslog message and we'll write that the value of the second fraction is and we'll follow that by invoking the print method on frac2. This time we need to release frac1 and we also need to release frac2. Those are the two fraction objects that we allocated in our program. And then we're done with the program's execution. So let's go ahead and build and run this program here. Oh, we got an error. I made a typo in this program here. It says implicit declaration of function nslog with a small l. So let's fix that and do another build and go. This time the program ran and you can see the output here. We get the value of the first fraction is two-thirds and the value of the second fraction is correctly displayed as three-sevenths. So one of the things that is worthwhile noticing in this program example, even though it's very simple, is that we get to use the same method on different objects. Here we use the set numerator method and the set denominator, denominator method on frac1. We also use set numerator and set denominator on frac2. We use the same print method on the two objects. We send the print message to frac1 here to display the value of the first fraction. And we send the print message to frac2 to display the value of the second fraction, which is, uh, as we know, 3 sevenths. This is a very important concept uh, when dealing with objects, the fact that you can have different objects which contain different values, and you get to use the same methods on those different objects.